mother of all. How is this even legal? Okay, 531 horsepower, they are definitely there. Hello again, and welcome to the Xpeng, or should I say Xiaopeng G9. Xiaopeng is actually the founder's last name, and this Xiaopeng or Xpeng G7 is the newest and finest experience from this guy. Some of you may have seen me make a video about the Xpeng P7. And that was their current flagship, but now there's a new one. This is more huge. It's more flagshipy. It's even more cool. Just look at the color. A matte green, almost gray. Very, very interesting. From the front, as you can see, it very much looks like a P7, the X-Ping, but it's slightly raised. But as you can see right now, it's riding pretty low. So it's got a very nice streamlined design. Maybe looks is very subjective, but but this this does look better than the Hongxi HS9. Man. Especially these integrated front lights here, where you've got the, the two beams here, and, and in China you also got a lighter sensor here, but we can't use it really here in Europe. The one design element that is to be found on all X-Pong or X-Ping models is the sweeping front light here, going all the way across the hood. Very nice looking. This is also to be found on this car. And if you take a closer look, this looks like a piano. Down here you'll find the intake for the cooling of the battery in the car. And in the sides, yeah, there's some blank, blanked off plastic. Because the car doesn't need all that cooling, but it looks pretty good with the white girth and the white mouth in the bottom. When you see the G9 from the side, it very much looks like something we have seen before, right? It is, ladies and gentlemen, the Range Rover Sport, Chinese cousin. And if you know a thing or two about Xpeng, you'll know that they are the reminiscence of cutting edge technology, a decent good design, and also a very good price point. Okay, so what is the price then? It's in Danish crowns first, of course, because I'm from Denmark, and that's the most important thing, right? 480,000 Danish crowns, and this is the top spec model with all the blows and whistles, and it's just below 700,000. Danish crowns. Okay, very well. There's probably one viewer from, I don't know, Netherlands, who also wants to know the European or the Euro price. And that is 58,000 for the base price of the G9. And this is the top spec model, obviously. So here we are talking about 80,000 euros. And that is an extremely good price point compared to the HS9 Hongshui, which I think is a bit higher. I'm sure I can't pronounce these Chinese. I actually like the G9, the name, it's pretty easy. But the HS9, yeah, it's already three letters. That's too hard, man. Too hard. And the thing is, now we are comparing it to a Range Rover Sport before. And the Range Rover Sport, fully specced, blows and whistles, everything. It's, it's a bit steep. It's, I think you could get almost three of these for one of those. You decide. Around the back, you also get the swooping rear tail light, and you also get the G9 performance logo here, because this is the top of the line model. There's three models. There is the base model, which is the one for 58,000 euros, and then you have got the long range one, and then you got the performance one. And in the performance one, you obviously got a stupid amount of power, a 100, almost 100 kilowatt hour battery, which will bring this up to two seconds. The thing is, I have a Xiaopeng or Xpeng employee in the car. And he's gonna help me. Now the Xpeng employee is taking a wee. Well, I thought they engineered their way out of that. Obviously not. Back to the car. Very soft. These rims will only be found on the performance model. Looks pretty nice with the center mount here. It's actually not a center mount, it's just a cap. So it'll be a normal wheel underneath here, but yeah, pretty exclusive looking with the center hub though. I don't want to be a future detailer because these rims are a pain in the ass to clean, to say at least. But they look pretty nice, I guess. 
And then you have this design element where the stands X-Ping. And the thing about this is they have integrated a camera into it. And over here, there's the side mirror. Looks pretty normal, but then you look underneath. There's two individual cameras. And that's the thing about the X-Ping cars. They're very dependent on the cameras. There are about 14 cameras, 12 sensors, and four LiDAR sensors around this car. I think I got that right. Otherwise, I'll get a mail from the X-Ping employee in the car soon, because these guys are always online. It's like this car. Wow. Yep, the automotive industry has definitely moved on. The thing about the G9 here is that these cameras I just mentioned and sensors and everything, it's included in all the models. This base model from 58,000, which will go 460 kilometers WLSP. Then you got the long range model, which will go 570 WLSP. And then you got the performance one, which will go 520. And think about this battery and the architecture of this car is that they have looked a bit on Porsche because they have made the same 800 volt system in this car. And that means that you can charge this car faster than any car I've ever seen. Because when I pulled into the Ionity charging station, this car had a peak charging rate of 317 kilowatt. I would guess that is enough power to run a small farm or something. And the reason why I'm saying a farm is because we are actually on a farm. You look at this giant thing and you think, okay, it's not a light car. And no, it's not. It's 2,300 kilos because this is the performance version. So, and that brings me on to the power. The long range and the base model have the same 313 horsepower. And this one is the big daddy. It got the engine in the back and also the engine in the front. And that means 258 more horsepower. So that is a combined 531 horsepower. So yeah, it's not really slow, I think. I think I got that right too. The X-Ping employee is sending me thumbs up, so. I guess that's, that's right. So now we're gonna see how it's performing on the road. It's gonna be good. Unlike some sport utility vehicles, this is actually stupid fast. Not even... That's a lot of wheel spin from the front. Jesus, mother... Mother of all. How is this even legal? Okay, 531 horsepower, they are definitely there in this 2.3 ton car. Okay, going on some twisty roads here. Jesus, that's a lot of power. Don't mind the GoPro here. Okay, pretty good. It's not too bad for a 2.3 ton vehicle. Actually pretty good. <laughs> okay, now into the into the city. And how does it perform in the city? It was pretty good on the twisties for a 2.3 ton car. Obviously not no sports car, but not too shabby made. But this is a comfy vehicle, so here driving around the city is its best side. It's very comfortable. Maybe we should take the car to the comfort setting. There isn't even a comfort setting. It's just standard and eco. Then we'll keep it in sport, but we'll make the ride height high. Here in the city, it's obviously much better than on the twisties, but yeah, overall very comfortable. This is an electric car, so it's obviously very quiet, but this is like extra quiet because it's, this car has a lot of sound dampening, and so it makes for a very relaxing experience overall. The thing about electric cars in this car, it's 2.3 ton, 531 horsepower, and this is quicker than most of the supercars I grew up with. It's just stupid, actually. Let's just try to launch it for the hell of it. Okay, push the brake pedal down. And the accelerator full on. And now wait. Oh my. Jesus. This car deploys full power when you launch it. It's not like building up. Or some electric cars are like building up the power. But this is like giving you everything like that. That means you can make like rapid accelerations and you can make rapid overtakes and actually get yourself out of some situations and that's and a good safety feature oh yeah something this right here is the key of the g9 and it looks a bit like the g9 in a very slim and futuristic setting and you got a mirror finished up on the top here and you've got four buttons here 
And these four buttons are the same as in the P7. So you got the unlock button, you got the lock button, then you got the charge port button and the rear hatch opener. But if you take a look here on the side, you got no protruding door handles, but then you got these cutouts. And these cutouts are actually door handles. So if you push the unlock button, these will pop out. And then you have the very well-designed electric port, which is obviously automatic because this is the Xpeng G9. Oh, that's not the right button. Soon you'll be driving your car on the remote. Actually pretty cool. Hello, hello. The Xpeng employee is keeping a watch on me. He's going now. Let's record. Welcome to the inside of the Xpeng G9. This is, yeah, I guess pretty impressive on the outside. But here in the inside, it's actually really impressive. Like, for real. I was driving the P7, the Xpeng P7. And that was all right, it was, but I can really see that Xiaopong have stepped their game up with this car. Just the sheer amount of materials in here in leather is impressive. You got leather like almost on all panels and it's not like cheap synthetic leather. This is like Napa leather, leather or something like that. And the Xiaopong employee told me that it comes from the same supplier as Bentley. And I actually believe him because this is, it's such a nice feeling on these seats and just the center console and up here and in the center here and also down here. So there's even leather down here below the steering wheel where there's normally plastic in a Mercedes or a BMW or leather here in the middle, leather even on the glove box. And then you got the Dinaudi speakers here, the metal finish, also very nice. There's only a couple of spots where there is piano finish and that is in the middle here and also over here in the doors where the window switches are. And if you start here in the middle, you got your two resting spots for your phone. So you got two wireless charging pads here. Then down below that, you got two cup holders where you can click them like this and a cup holder will emerge. And you can click them back up here to make them flush. Then in the middle here, you got a storage space for a very colored microfiber towel. Guess that's the Xiaopong employees. But you can open this from both sides, so the sound of closing this is very, it's a very rocket and it's a good sound. It's not like plastic. I'm just gonna make the test here. Yeah, it's built probably. They have really stepped up their game. Yeah, there's no creaks. <laughs> that's, that's impressive. And then the heart of the system is this giant screen here. Where you got your center screen here, which is obviously quick and nice respond to the touch. And then you got a screen over here for the passenger side. And that screen is only visible for the passenger. So you got a special filter. So when you see the screen from this side or from the, from the driver's point of view, you can't see the screen. It will be black. It's pretty, pretty good thinking there. So this guy over here, he can enjoy Netflix or he can enjoy YouTube videos. He can watch crash compilations on the Nürburgring while the driver can take him to the Nürburgring. And these two screens are not the only screens. There's also a screen behind the wheel here. And now you may be asking, okay, but this is a top of the line model. You won't get these features in the, in the base model or in the long range. But Xpeng here is very generous because this is standard equipment and everything is standard beside of the nice audio system. And these massage functions and leg extensions here on the passenger seat. So the screen up here, you got your drive modes, which will be showed as a graphic here where we're now in sport, so there'll be red lines going down here alongside of the car. Then you can go into snow mod, and then you can go into eco, and then you can go to standard mode. And the thing about these different settings or drive modes, every time you change something radical here in the car, there'll be a sound. And that change will appear here up in the driver's seat speakers. Driver's seat speakers, 
what, what, what are you saying? I'm not even kidding. There are speakers here in the seat on each side. And these speakers up here will make sound when you're changing something as the modes or if you are taking a call. So this seat will actually tell you where the nearest kebab place is. Other good details. The, this seat mechanism here is also the same color. Look at the seat belts, same color. Built buckle, same color. The entrance here, same color. They're really stepping up their game here. This G9 is the performance version and therefore you're riding on a air suspension. And that means you can higher or lower the air suspension here in the car. Some of these more interesting and very unusual settings you got in a car like this is a driver sound effects where you can change where the sound is being played. Either the sound is being played here from the seat or from the car in total or only from the seat. So, but right now we want it in the share it mode so all of us can hear it. And then you can go into the prompt tone theme and that means you can change the sound of the turn signal. So right now it's very, very standard, but then you can change it to, or you can change the, the emergency warning from being default to concert hall. We're going to keep it in a concert hall. <laughs> this is when you're not fastening your seatbelt. Then we will now have this tune. And this is pretty much like an Android phone. You can change everything you can think of. And more to that is that there are speakers on the outside. And that means there's also a setting here called boombox mode. That means you can play music on the outside. I'll just take the microphone off so you can hear it. So you can sit on the beach and just enjoy music or just play the music when you're standing still in a intersection. Now taking the G9 for a spin. Right now the lowest riding setting here. Let me take this car into sport because this is a sport utility vehicle after all. Straight. That's the new sound of the sport mode we just changed. Going to the race position. Jesus fucking Christ. Why are people looking this much? Imagining taking this car back to like 1980s. <laughs> they must have thought that you were insane. This is still insane by modern standards. The only thing you won't get in the Xiaopong or in the Xpeng G7 is the legacy or the brand value of the big brands like Range Rover Way. Your car is handcrafted by grown ass men in England. Why is the sun so bright? I can't see anything, man. Turn down that light. Okay, so you won't get the brand value and you won't get the, oh, look at me, I'm driving a BMW, I'm driving a Mercedes, or I'm driving a Range Rover Sport because I'm a hunter and, and I live and smell fine wine and dine. Okay, so you won't get that. The thing you will get is value for money. And that's the thing about Xpeng, it's pretty good value. Just the sheer amount of details in here is fucking extreme. I haven't even shown you all of it and that's the worst part. Okay, so overall, this is absolutely the best vehicle from Xiaobong. I love that name. I just love to say it. Oh, from Xpeng at this time. This is definitely the flagship and you can feel it. Also, when you're driving, it's nice, it's comfortable. Everything in here, it's nice. Cool vehicle, I must say. Definitely a step up from the P9 and even a greater step up from the P5, I think it's called. The ugly one. This is, this is a lot more nice. Try it out. That's my recommendation. So see you in the next one. Should we do the sponsored part in Chinese then? Hmm. Oh, it's the Xiaopeng employee. Ni hao. Ni hao ma.